Um, I don't look at the exams before I actually, <laughs> um, you know, record myself um, completing the test. So you get to take the test at the same time I'm taking the test. And at the end, we'll see who has the highest score. It's all in love. It's all in fun. So question number one, everyone. If a client expresses anger during care, which of the following would be an appropriate response for the nurse aide to take? Why are you being so mean today? You should not say such mean things to people. I will come back when your bad mood is over. You seem upset. Would you like to talk about it? Uh, active communication and active listening are very important. And so as a caregiver, it's not about us doing all the talking. We need to actually listen to our clients and our residents to find out what's going on with them. So the last option seems to be the best to me. Question number two. A client drinks 240 mLs of soup, 120 mLs of coffee, 90 mLs of juice for lunch. The client's total liquid intake for lunch is, all right, so we're going to do 240 plus 120 is 360 plus an additional 90 would make that 450 mLs. Question three. When a nurse aide gives when the nurse gives the nurse aide confidential information about a client, the nurse aide should share it with others, keep the information private, discuss it with other staff members in the break room, discuss it with the um, client's family. So we know about HIPAA, we know about the confidentiality laws. And so we're only gonna discuss patient information with those who are involved directly in the patient's care. And we're not just gonna randomly give that information to someone in the staff room, okay? So we're gonna go ahead and keep the information private. Question four, the nurse aide should place the client's soiled bed sheets on the bedside table, on the floor of the soiled utility room, in a biohazard bag in the soiled linen container. Um, normally things that can be washed, even if they have blood on them, if they can be washed, we're gonna put those items in the linen container, the soiled linen container, so they can be cleansed. If it was something that was disposable and it had blood or some type of bodily fluid on it, we would place that in a biohazards bag, which is normally red. So I think the best option for question number four is the fourth option. Question five, what is the most important reason for using a mechanical lift to transfer clients? Again, the mechanical lift is kind of like a crane for humans and they may call it a Hoyer lift, which is a brand name. Whenever you're working on a mechanical lift, you have to have two persons. One actually holds on and makes sure the patient's stable and the other one would be um, operating the mechanical lift. With that being stated, um, the first option states that it takes fewer staff to transfer someone. Nope, it always takes two people, so that's not fewer. It is the safest method for clients and staff, possibly. It is faster than the other methods. No, it is time consuming, but it's safer. And the last one states that it is the method that clients like best. No one likes to really be lifted up <laughs> into the air and transferred. So I'm gonna choose the second one as the option. Question six, when preparing to take a meal tray into the client's room, what is the most important action for the nurse aide to take? Um, check that the client's name is displayed on the tray card. Make sure that the client's favorite foods are present. Keep all foods covered until eaten. Determine if enough fluids have been ordered. Okay, and so the most important action when you're taking the tray into the room is to make sure that the correct person is receiving the um, trade that they're supposed to be um, given based on their diet. So I'm going to choose this first option. And you'll be able to see in a few moments if you're smarter than a nurse educator. Question number seven, the nurse aide should use proper body mechanics in order to keep the nurse aide's weight down, protect the nurse aide from injury, keep facility equipment in working order, make a good impression. When you think about body mechanics and lifting with your legs instead of your back, we're gonna do that to aid and um, protect the nurse aid from injury. Question eight, when making an occupied bed, the nurse aid should leave the bed in the lowest position, make the toe pleat, leave the bottom sheet untucked, place salt linens on the floor. Well, we know the last option is not correct. You don't leave the bottom sheet untucked. We actually want that one to fit securely on the mattress. Making a toe pleat is optional, 
But what is not optional is at the end of the care, taking that bed down to the lowest position. Question nine, frequent turning and repositioning of the client help prevents um, cyanosis, that's when a person turns blue, indigestion, you know, having trouble um, digesting the food, maybe having some heartburn, coronary disease, that's heart disease, pressure ulcers, um, caused um, some discoloration or, um, or changes in the skin condition because the person's been laying in one place for too long. So frequent turning and repositioning can help prevent the fourth option, pressure ulcers. And in most of your facilities, you want to reposition your patient every two hours or more often if they're complaining of pain. Question 10, pillows should be used for a client placed in a sideline position to promote sleep, decrease pain, prevent skin breakdown, decrease edema. Okay, so when someone's in a side lying position, also referred to as a lateral position, um, we want to keep them on their side. We don't want them returning to their back because we turn them to protect their skin, to prevent pressure ulcers. So I'm going to think that the number three, we um, use the pillow and place them on their side to prevent skin breakdown is the best option. You don't place someone on their side to decrease edema. You would elevate their extremities, whether it's their arms or their legs, whichever is um, swollen. Question 11, which of the following is the most important for the prevention of skin breakdown in the client? Air drying the client's skin, rubbing lotion on the client's skin, ambulating the client once a day, repositioning the client every two hours. And I just gave you that answer. So we know that the fourth one is the best for question 11. Question 12, when applying elastic stockings to the client, it would be best for the nurse aide to position a client lying down in bed, dangling the legs from the edge of the bed, standing at the side of the bed, sitting in a wheelchair. Now, I want you to think about those elastic stockings also referred to as compression holes or TED holes. We put those on to improve circulation. And um, also sometimes when your patients stand up, the blood can go down into the legs. The patient can start feeling dizzy because the blood is not circulate into the brain. So those compression holes help to keep the blood pressure up. Um, so I think the best option for this one is to put those stockings on while your patient's still lying down in bed. Um, because again, if you put them on while they're dangling to the side, you know, the, the, the blood flow is gonna go that way. So. Um, that's my thinking, that's my rationale, and we'll see if I'm correct. Question 13, the nurse aide is assisting a client to the bathroom. After the nurse aide uses the toilet, excuse me, after the client uses the toilet, the nurse aide notices red streaks in the client's stool. The nurse aide should avoid flushing the toilet and report the finding to the nurse. Ask the dietary department to change the client's diet. Tell the client to report the finding to the primary health care provider. Understand that this is an expected finding in the older adult client. And so anytime there's a, pay, a change in patient's condition, you're going to notify your nurse. And so don't flush the stool. Um, you're going to report the finding to the nurse. And red streaks can be an indication that maybe your patient's strained. They could have some hemorrhoids, but it's an obvious sign of bleeding. So definitely let your nurse be aware and ask your patient some questions. You know, did it hurt when you had your bowel movement? And you can also report that information to the nurse. Question 14. In order to move a client up in bed, the nurse aide should raise the head of the bed. Get assistance from a coworker. Place the bed in the lowest position possible. Wait until the end of shift report. <laughs> All right, so um, if you're thinking about it at 7 a.m., everybody is super busy. Those trades are gonna be there by eight. You don't wanna wait until the end of the shift report to start repositioning your patients. Um, you can try to get assistance from a coworker, but they're also assessing their 10 patients at the same time. So the best response, and um, if, the, if you're trying to help move someone up in bed, is to lower the head of the bed. 
I mean, and you don't, you won't be trying to raise the patient um, in the bed against gravity. So you don't raise the head of the bed in order to move someone up in the bed. So I think the third one is the best option. Question 15, when ambulating the client, the nurse aide should ask the nurse aide for help. Be sure that the client is wearing non-skid footwear. Ask a family member for assistance. Walk in front of the client and show the client the way. All right, so ambulating someone safely, they must always have on non-skid footwear. Question 16, the nurse aide must wear gloves when transferring a client, providing mouth care, dressing a client, weighing a client. And so of these, without you know, any additional information, the most contaminating would be mouth care. Okay, so we want to make sure that we're protecting our clients and protecting ourselves by wearing gloves before rendering or providing mouth care to your clients. Question 17, a nurse aide, excuse me, a client asked the nurse aide, am I going to die? Which of the following is the best response for the nurse aide to make? Your patient could actually, you know, be having thoughts of, you know, they know their medical care, they know their medical conditions. And so this is something that probably has been on their mind. And I think that the fourth option would allow them to express themselves and, um, you know, actually start, the, you know, the, the process, either the healing process, the grieving process, but you're going to take that information that you receive and, of course, notify the nurse so that, you know, as a nurse, I can get additional support, I can get some, you know, counseling, I can get the case manager involved. Um, so I think the fourth option would be the best for this particular client. Question 18. The following diagram represents a lunch served to a client. The client ate only the fruit, milk, and half of the salad. What percentage of intake should the nurse aide record? Okay, so they ate the fruit, milk, and half of the salad. So that would be 10%, 20%, 40%. All right, hopefully you agree with me and we'll see if we're correct at the end. Question 19, when caring for a vision impaired client, the nurse aide should ambulate the client by holding the client's hand and walk in front of the client. Tell the client that the food tray is in front of the client after the fruit food tray has been delivered. Provide a dimly lit environment for the client. Announce self before touching the client. Let me just reread that one. When caring for a vision impaired client, the nurse aide should, okay? I definitely want to announce who I am before I touch them. I'm telling the client that the food tr um, tray is in front of the client after the food tray has been delivered. Hopefully the person who is coming into the room and bringing in the food tray <laughs> has already you know, started talking to the resident before they set that tray down. So I think the fourth option is best for question 19. Question 20, to promote independence when feeding a client, the nurse aide should inform the client to drink all of the liquids before the solid food, assist the client in mixing the meat and vegetables together, allow self-feeding as much as possible, ask family and visitors to leave the room when the client is eating. So if you want to encourage independence, you're going to have to encourage your patients to help with their ADLs. And ADLs will be activities of daily living, such as eating, drinking, moving about the facility, taking a bath, et cetera. So for this particular question, during the feeding process, we're going to allow that resident to feed themselves as much as possible. And if you're worried about them making a mess, put a towel or some type of clothing protector over them. But our job as healthcare professionals is to keep them as independent as possible for as long as possible. So we're going to allow them to make a mess in order to, you know, maintain or gain their independence. Question 21. The nurse aide has raised the height of the client's bed to provide care to the client, but the nurse aide has forgotten to bring the supplies needed. What should the next nurse aide do next? First, instruct the client to lie still. Second, quickly go get the supplies. 
Third, lower the bed and place the call light within reach. Fourth, ask the roommate to watch the client while the nurse aide gives the supplies. Well, we know the safest option is going to be to lower that bed and then place the call bell within reach. When you are taking your examination, do not assume that your exam is based upon someone who's um, in a hospital setting. It could be any adult. So that could be home care, it could be assisted living facility. And so this option didn't mention raising the side rails because when you're taking your CNA test, you know, if you do lower a rail, you raise it back up. But if you're thinking about like the home care setting, a lot of those beds don't have rails. So I want you to keep that in mind when you're taking your CNA exam. And for this option, it did not mention rails. However, if you have raised a bed, you lower the rail, excuse me, if you've raised a bed, you lower the bed back down and you always want to leave the client with a way to call you. Okay, so that is going to be the best answer for question 21. 22, a client requested the nurse A call the client's minister. The nurse A should. Ask the client why the client wants the nurse A to call the minister. Tell the client that that is not part of the nurse A's job. Tell the client that the nurse A will inform the nurse of the client's request. Call the minister for the client. Okay, and so the third is the best option. You're just going to um, notify the nurse so that she can assist with that call. Um, because the minister may have questions and again we got to worry about HIPAA etc and so um, I would actually let the nurse address that client's request. Question 23, the healthcare team member who assists the client's performance of activities of daily living is the social worker, occupational therapist, speech therapist, or case manager. And social worker, think of them and the case manager to kind of like two of this. Um, they're kind of like the same specialties. However, the terminology or the name has changed. But they're going to help with discharge planning. Um, speech therapist helps with someone who maybe has a stroke and maybe they have dysphagia or dysphagia and they can have some speech um, inabilities or difficulties. That would be speech therapy. They would also help with someone who has swallowing issues. The occupational therapist is the one who works with those fine um, you know, motor skills. It can help someone learn how to eat again. If they have tremors, they have adaptive devices. So if someone needs assistance with their ADLs, um, you, you know, and of course, if you're the CNA, you know more about this patient than a nurse does. So if you see that maybe the tremors are getting worse or there are some limitations, please let your nurse know. And then that nurse can notify the doctor and then hopefully they will order an occupational therapist and add them to the patient's care plan. Question 24, what is the first area of a client's body that the nurse aide should wash when providing a bed bath? And of course, we're going to start from clean and work our way down to the dirty areas. So the first thing we're going to clean is going to be the client's face. And um, just as a reminder, when you're cleaning the eyes, you want to clean from the inner cannula going towards the outer cannula. And you want to switch spots on the washcloth before cleaning the opposite eye because we don't want to spread um, pink eye from one eye to the other. So remember, enter the outer, switch places, and repeat that process on the opposite side of the face. 25, which of the following client observation should the nurse aide report immediately to the nurse? Pink nail beds, rectal temperature of 99.6 or 37.5 degrees, um, um, or 37.5 degrees Celsius, a radial pulse of 110, clear yellow urine. Okay, and so the one that you're going to report that is abnormal is actually going to be this radial pulse. Um, your normal heart rate or pulse rate for an adult would be between 60 up to 100 beats per minute. And so this one is higher than 100 beats per minute. And this is the outliner. The rectal temperature of 99.6, that's a core temperature. And normally we're okay with our temperatures being anywhere from you know high 97s to high 99s. Uh, we want to give everyone that, that gradient. So a temperature of 99.6, in my opinion, isn't something you're going to report to the nurse right away, but it is something that you probably want to monitor. Question 26, articles contaminated with blood or body fluid should be disposed of in the soil linen basket, biohazard container, soil utility room, client's room trash container. And notice this did not say linens, it said um, articles. 
So for this one, I'm going to choose the biohazard container, especially since it specifically mentions the blood. 27, the nurse aide should understand that the signaling device must be answered after the nurse aide has made the rounds. Placed on the bedside table at the foot of the bed, that makes no sense. Place within the client's reach, deactivated for clients with dementia. That's absolutely no, no. So we're gonna do the third option. Question 28, when collecting a 24 hour urine sample for a client, the nurse aide should request that the client take a bath or shower before starting the urine collection. Select food items that do not contain red meat. Drink two liters of water. No, that would, um, that would just um, dilute the urine specimens. Um, discard the first voided urine. So whenever you're getting your items for a 24 hour um, urine specimen collection, um, it starts once the patient voids for the first time and discards that urine. And you wanna actually document the start time. And then 24 hours later, um, that's when the, the collection period would end. Question 29, when caring for a client who has a hearing loss, the nurse aide should speak very loudly and use gestures as much as possible. Let the client use the roommate's hearing aid. Use only written communication with the client. Face the client when speaking to the client. Okay, when someone has hearing loss, there's a good possibility that they may be able to read lips. So you don't want to exaggerate your words. You don't need to speak louder, but you do need to face the client when you're speaking to um, him or her. Question 30, a nurse aide is assisting a client with mouth care. Which of the following actions should the nurse aide take? Avoid brushing the tongue with the toothbrush. Brush the outer surface of the teeth by using a side-to-side -side motion. Floss between the teeth, moving the floss up and down. Floss the teeth before brushing the teeth. Let me go back and read this one. Which of the actions should the nurse aide take? We know that we're not going to avoid brushing the tongue with a toothbrush. Um, we know that we're not going to floss the teeth before or brushing the teeth. All right, side to side motion. You can do circular motions or side to side. All right, so CNAs, I don't know what the answer is for question number 30. Floss between the teeth, moving the floss up and down. I'm gonna choose this third one. And we'll see if I'm right in a few moments. Question 31, a nurse aide who wants to demonstrate effective listening skills should plan what to say next while the client is talking. Show no emotion when listening to the client. Finish the client's sentences for the client. Give complete attention to the client while the client is talking. We know that the last option is the best for effective listening skills. Question 32, when a client has memory loss or confusion, the nurse aide should laugh at the client's confused statements, speak loudly to the client, ignore the client, give the client simple step-by-step -step instructions. Yes, we wanna make sure we keep things very simple for someone with confusion or memory loss, because if you start giving them a whole bunch of tasks at once, they're not gonna remember it due to their mentation. Question 33, which of the following activities is within the role of the nurse aide? Observing clients for changes in condition, deciding the staging of a pressure sore, suggesting new special diets to clients, giving clients spiritual advice. Sorry. And so of course you assist the nurse when you're taking those vital signs and you're going in and, and you're talking to the resident, you're going to be observing for changes in condition. And if there is any change, you're going to notify the nurse. Question 34, the Heimlich maneuver or abdominal thrust is used when the client is having a seizure, choking, coughing, or having difficulty swallowing. Now, one good thing about it, when someone is choking, especially if they're of age, they've been taught the universal choking sign. They cannot say they're choking. They cannot cough because if they were, you would encourage them to cough because they're not choking. They have a partial obstruction. And so whenever, whenever you're going to be doing those abdominal thrusts, 
that means that person is choking, their airway is blocked, coughing and having difficulty swallowing, even though we use the words interchangeably, that could be a sign of a partial obstruction, but it's not a complete blockage such as with choking. So if a patient's choking, you're gonna perform those abdominal thrust. Question 35, a new client expressed to the nurse aide, I would love to go to my religious services weekly. What should the nurse aide do? Report the client statements to the nurse. Tell the client's family of the client's wishes. Share this information with another nurse aide to coordinate when to take the client. Not share this information because the client's personal wishes should be kept private. I would definitely um, provide this information to the nurse. And especially think about it nowadays, a lot of religious services are broadcasted online and we have computers, cell phones, we have just so many devices that we can utilize to help our patients have some normalcy or our residents have normalcy. So definitely notify the nurse and let's see what we can do as a team to work together to, you know, even if the client can't go to religious service, but at least to, you know, help her feel a part of her religious community. Question 36, after cleaning the client's denture, the nurse aide should store the clean dentures, excuse me, the client's dentures in a labeled container wrapped in a paper towel at the nurse's station in the utility room. And of course, we're going to um, label them, label a container and place the dentures inside of that. Question 37, the nurse aide should understand that the back massage causes muscle spasms, increases blood pressure, promotes circulation, increases heart rate. So when you are providing the back massage, normally we do so in circular motions in order to promote circulation. Question 38, a nurse aide who, a nurse, excuse me, I keep saying a nurse aide who's confused. A client who is confused refuses to change from sleepwear to other clothes. The nurse aide should. Respect the client's refusal and ask the client again later. You all, less is more sometimes. You don't have to go back and forth with these clients. So I'm, I'm thinking that the first one's going to be the option. All right, insist that the client changes clothes. Get another nurse aide to help change the client's clothes. Inform the client that the client cannot leave the room without changing clothes. They have them clothes, y'all. I'm just happy about that. So um, unless they're like obviously sold, um, I'm just going to respect the client's refusal and that's their day clothes for a little bit. Um, maybe they'll feel better and you can um, get, get them changed um, later in the evening. 39, while the nurse aide is helping a client to the shower, the client falls to the floor. What should the nurse aide do immediately? Report the fall to the nurse. Insist that the client take a bath instead of a shower. Discuss the fall with the client's family member. Inform the client that the client should hold on to grab bars while showering. Well, you're not gonna leave that resident. You're gonna pull the emergency cord. You're going to activate, you're gonna get some help. We need to make sure that nurse gets in the room. And then um, we can all as a team assist that person up from the you know, floor. If you try to do so by yourself, not only could you make their injury worse, but you can also injure yourself. So we'll do a team lift, get the client back into the bed, and then your nurse can do the assessment. Meanwhile, you as the CNA will be doing things like running and go get, you know, dressings. If they injured themselves, maybe they need a four by four gauze, but you'd also be responsible for doing the vital signs. And then once we get everything, you know, once we get the patient stabilized, that is when you can document what happened. Question 40, what should the nurse aide do first when finding out that a client's property has been stolen? Keep quiet and try to catch the thief. Call the family, call the police, inform the nurse. We're going to notify the nurse. Question 41, techniques that promote good communication include avoiding calling the client by the client's preferred name, correcting the client when the client forgets a word, Speaking clearly and slowly, informing a client that the nurse aide has a limited amount of time to talk. And so we're going to communicate um, best by speaking clearly and slowly. Question 42, while the nurse aide is transporting a client to receive physical therapy, the fire alarm sounds, the nurse aide should. 
evacuate the client to a safe area, return the client to the client's own room, transport the client in the elevator to receive physical therapy, leave the client in the hallway and look for the source of the fire. Well, we're going to race. We're going to rescue. We're going to alert. We're going to confine, which could be like close off the fire doors. And then we can either try to extinguish the fire once our patient has been rescued. We can try to extinguish the fire or in, in the case where we can't extinguish the fire because there's a huge fire, we would, es we would escape or exit. We would leave the building. All right, so which one of these answer options is the safest for the client that you're currently with? And I think it's going to be this first one. We're going to evacuate the client to a safe area. Um, if we are transporting a client and we're between, you know, different hallways, et cetera, I'm not going to go back and take the client to his or her own room because I don't know where the fire is. So um, I think that getting a client to a safe area would be the priority. Question 43, a nurse aide is caring for a client who is dependent. The nurse aide decides to reposition a client every four hours instead of every two hours. The nurse aide could potentially be charged with negligence, battery, assault, a libel. Okay, and so it's going to be negligence. You're neglecting your resident. Um, we know that the standard rule is we change or we turn a patient every two hours or more as needed. And so the fact that you decide to go against that, you're causing injury to your patient, and that would be negligence. Battery and assault, you know, it's like you physically hitting them, and then libel could be you just like defaming or telling, providing false information about someone. 44, the nurse is assigned to a client who frequently expresses concerns about the care the client is receiving. When the client begins to express the concern, the nurse aide should remind the client that no one is perfect, Su suggest that the client live with a family member, refuse to care for the client until the client stops expressing concerns, listen carefully to show concern and willingness to help. And so the fourth option is the best. Question 45, when given a bed bath to a client, the nurse aide should cover the client to expose only the part of the body being bathed. This is done in order to assist the nurse aide in remembering the order of the bath, provide the client with privacy and dignity, keep the bed linen as dry as possible, make the client aware of which body part is being bathed. And so whenever we're keeping someone covered, definitely privacy and dignity and um, I think that's the best option for question number 45. 46, the most important care for a client with a cast is keeping the extremity aligned with the client's body, keeping the extremity elevated. Report a change in the color, movement, and sensation of the client's extremity, making sure the cast does not become sold. Most important is um, to make sure that the cast isn't too tight and so, you know, you're, you're going to be seeing like their fingers and stuff. They're sticking out of the cast, especially if they have like a more of an arm cast. And so you're going to see if their hands swell, if they're unable to move, they start saying, oh, you know, my fingers are tingling. That's going to be something that kind of indicates that the circulation has changed. And you do want to notify the nurse because that could be a medical emergency and that cast would have to be removed immediately. Question 47, the nurse aide is providing oral care to a client who's unconscious. The nurse aide should place the client in which of the following positions. Well, if you've watched some of our other videos, you know that that's going to be that sideline position. That's going to be turning your resident onto the lateral side. It doesn't matter if it's left or right, but that's going to allow the um, secretions to accumulate or pull in the cheek area. And then you can use like your little suction wand to take the secretions out. 48, one of the most important tasks in caring for the agitated or confused client is to transfer the client to a mental health hospital for proper care. <laughs> request that the nurse um, administrator, excuse me, request that the nurse administer a tranquilizer for the client, restrain the client until the healthcare provider examines the client, protect the client and others from physical harm. So of course that's the most important. Um, we don't just restrain someone for the sake of restraining them. 
Um, so, and we wouldn't restrain them until the healthcare provider examines the client because your nurse could call and get a telephone order, especially if it's a behavioral restraint. So right now, let's just try to protect the client and others from physical harm. Maybe, you know, we're gonna use some other de-escalation techniques, um, you know, find out what the client's main concern is. And then if the client is still being agitated or confused and becomes combative, where they're like hitting people or they're pulling out their IVs or tubings, that's when we con would consider a restraint. Question 49, and we're almost done CNAs. When working with a client with Alzheimer's disease, it is important that the nurse aides um, speak very loudly, approach the client from behind, correct the client every time the client forgets a word, provide a regular routine for the client. Remember, they just like to wonder, wonder, wonder. They walk around, they forget things. They may go into the wrong person's room. And so they're having so many other concerns what we don't need is for you to be changing their routine every day. We're going to try to keep our schedules as consistent as possible. Okay, so the fourth option would be the best for someone who has Alzheimer's disease. Question 50, how can a nurse aide best help the client to maintain independence? Allow the client to do as many activities of daily living as possible without assistance. Request that the client's family provide assistance to the client with performing activities of daily living. Do as many activities of daily living for the client as possible. Remind the client to quickly complete activities of daily living. And of course, we're going to allow the client to provide some of his or her own care. And that's how we're going to maintain independence. So the first answer is the best. Question 51, the nurse aide is taking the client's vital signs. What should the nurse aide do if the client's pulse Pulse, ox, pulse oximetry reading is 95%. Um, usually that's normal. So normal would be between 94 and you know 99%. Um, and that's without me knowing anything about the resident's history because some residents and some patients could have a lower oxygen levels that are okay based on what the doctor has already written. And so if the pulse oximetry reading is 95%, you're gonna provide oxygen to the client you're gonna record the finding in the client's chart. You're gonna move the pulse oximetry sensor to another location. You're gonna report the finding to the nurse immediately. And again, that's normal. We're gonna report that. Um, we're actually gonna record that in the client's chart. Question 52, which of the following documents would inform the nurse aid of the client's needs? The policy manual, procedure manual, care plan, residence bill of rights. And so whenever you want to know about the plan for a client, you look at that client's care plan. That's individualized. The nurse has a care plan also, but you know, your doctors, they will you know, write an order and sometimes those orders will generate a whole protocol such as how to prevent bed clots, get them out of bed every two hours, how to prevent uh, pressure ulcers. We're gonna keep them clean and dry. Um, we're gonna make sure that we reposition them every two hours. Question 53, to orient a new client to the facility, it would be best for the nurse aide to inform the client that it is mandatory to partic participate in activities, encourage the client to make friends with at least two other clients, Introduce the client to other clients and staff members. Restrict visits from the client's family members during the first month. And no, we want them to feel included. So we're going to introduce them to others. Question 55, the nurse aide has been instructed to place the client in the supine position. The nurse aide should position the client on the clients. Whenever you think of supine position, take the U out. S-P-I-N-E, <laughs> we're gonna place that patient on their spine or on their back. And so the third option is the best. I'm kind of scared. I think I missed about three of these questions so far. So I wanna see how many of my CNA babies are smarter than a nurse educator. All right, question 55, a client falls and suffers a deep cut on the forehead. What should the nurse aide do next? We know we're not going to leave this client. I mean, I just kind of not even going to read the others. We're going to stay with the client and call for help. If you have a, a watch clock, a towel, a gown, I don't care whether it is, you have a piece of cloth, you could be applying pressure to the forehead um, in order to decrease bleeding or blood loss. 
Question 56. The family members of a client with diabetes mellitus brought the client cookies as a bedtime snack. The nurse aide should let the client eat the cookies. Convince the client to drink a diet soda instead. Inform the nurse of the cookies. Substitute fruit for the cookies. I need for you to notify the nurse and we will, you know, of course, re-educate the patient who has diabetes and also give some um, gentle education to the family members who are enabling the diabetic by bringing them cookies at bedtime. 57, after turning and repositioning the client, the nurse aide should make sure that all side rails are up, the signaling device is within the uh, place within the reach, all pillows have been removed, the bed is in the highest, positional, um, highest position possible. My CNA babies, if you put all the side rails up on the bed, that is a form of a restraint. So if a bed does have side rails, you have to have a doctor's order for the last two rails to be raised. So usually it's the upper two rails that are raised in you know, a standard procedure in the hospital. But if you raise all four, that is a restraint, okay? So we're not gonna do the first one. We're gonna choose the second option. We're gonna make sure the signaling device is within reach so they can call for assistance if they need us. Question 58, the best approach for assisting a client who is vision impaired to ambulate in an unfamiliar area is to guide the client by holding on the client's arm. Offer an arm to the client, walk in front of the client, walk behind the client. And I'm just gonna be side by side with my client. I'm gonna guide them by holding on to their arm. Question 59, when giving a client a bed bath, it is important for the nurse aide to cleanse the eyes by wiping from the inner to the outer corners of the eye. Ensure that the water temperature is 140 degrees Fahrenheit. No, <laughs> you're going to burn someone. Uncover the body, um, uncover the whole body so the linens do not get wet. Wash and dry the skin vigorously. And so the best option is going to be the first one. And I kind of discussed this earlier about the proper technique when um, cleaning someone's eyes and washing their face. Question 60, to find out what type of diet the client should be receiving, it would be best for the nurse aide to check with the kitchen staff on the client's room bulletin board, in the client's care plan, with the client's family. And as we discussed previously, if you wanna learn about the care plan or what's ordered for your patient, um, we're always gonna follow what's in that care plan. All right, so here comes the moment of truth, you all. Are you smarter than a nurse educator? I think I missed three out of 60, let's see. I missed four questions. Gasp. All right, so let's see which four I missed. All right, so it doesn't tell me there. I'm just going to scroll down until I see a color that is not green. All right, so question number eight. When making an occupied bed, the nurse aide should make the toe pleat. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> let's see the next one that I missed in order to move a client up in bed the nurse aide should get assistance from a co-worker okay I, I, I reckon yes I'm not saying they're wrong I'm just saying that I thought I was right <laughs> let's see the, the third question that I missed All right, the third question I missed was which of the following documents would inform the nurse aide of the client's needs? Procedure manual? All right, so I think that this question is, um, the answer they have for this question is incorrect. Um, I definitely believe it's the care plan, not the procedure manual. And then last but not least, the best approach for assisting a client who is vision impaired to ambulate in an unfamiliar area is to it says, um, offer an arm to the client. And so I reckon what they mean is that the client holds on to my arm, 
versus me holding on to theirs. All right, so everybody, again, this is Eunice Mathis. I love you all. I really um, thank you all for subscribing to our channel and watching our videos. Um, this is now, <laughs> it's now March 25th at 1219 a.m. I just wanted to come to you because I have a very busy weekend and make sure we do a quick review. Um, if you like the video, please go ahead and um, give us a thumbs up. Also share the video with others. Have a great evening, everybody.